Welcome back to the Salsa Club. How are we all feeling out here? <laughs> salsa vibe. Yeah, we all, that, that music will get you going. Welcome back to the Salsa Club. Episode 20 here on Value Tame. And we're almost old enough to drink. I did want to drink earlier, but <laughs> our friend Jenny did not want to have a drink. Jenny, welcome back to the show. Jenny Valdez in the house. Woo-hoo! Latina living limitlessly. And then we have our white girl with restrictions. A lot of restrictions. <laughs> Amber Joy Lane. Welcome back, Amber. Thank you, guys. How are you guys feeling? Who wants to who wants to chime in first on how you're feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. Oh, I just came from birthday weekend. That's true. Full of energy, full of good juju. Love you know? the energy, love the juju. How was your weekend? Good. I had a great show last night in Little Havana on a rooftop. It was amazing. Good vibes. I had yeah. like 40, 40 people there. It's a lot for comedy, so. That's a big time. It was nice. Next thing you know, my prediction, you're going to be selling out arenas one of these it's days. So- we, we better be one from One of these Rolo. days. We better oh, yeah. be from Rolo. She, oh, yeah. You guys going to do some sort of dance, some sort of thing going on here? Jenny's going to be the opening act for sure. Yes. Jenny is the main attraction. Hello. It's true. It's true. For Amber, open up any time. Okay, I love it. I love these teamwork, two beautiful teamwork. women getting along. Anyway, welcome to all our friends out there in internet land. If you're this is your first time tuning in, I'm your host, Adam Sosnick. I'm here to help you build your wealth and save that money, but also get better at dating, get better at managing your money, get better with the ladies or the dudes. If you're into the dudes, not judging, all good, whatever. Have a great time, whatever you floats your boat. (laughs) Um, You know, we're going to be talking a few topics today. Um, Obviously, money is a major centerpiece, but also we talk relationships, we talk dating, we talk hot sauce from time to time. Um, And our two lovely ladies who are going to be consistently here on the show are here to weigh in and give their two thoughts. So I want to start off with a situation that happened to me this weekend and get your thoughts on this. And then I saw some stuff with Leonardo DiCaprio and then I was like, all right, this is a perfect story. So I'm out at the Faina in South Beach. You guys know the Faina? Very yes. well. Classy operation, right? <laughs> I mean, drinks there are like 22 bucks a pop. Don't yeah, get me started minimum. on that. Minimum, right? So I'm there and I tall, gorgeous girl. She's with some friends. I'm with some friends. They're like, oh, go say what's up. Hey, what's ever? Not shy. So I'm like, Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah, it's Faina. We're having a good time. And I start to realize, I'm like, I actually recognize you. I kind of know you from somewhere. Oh, yeah. We put two and two together and we actually have very mutual friends. We actually went to college right around the same time. I go, hold on. How old are you? And she goes, yeah, I'm, I'm 40. I go, you're 40? Right? Same age. I go, you look incredible. Right? Like, wow. Like, good for you. Married kid. No, nothing. Whatever. I'm like damn, like 40 on the market. She's like, yeah, I'm living in Fort Lauderdale. I've actually have my company in Boca. Great. Okay. And she's like, well, here's my number. We should go out. Okay, great. All right. I'm like, yeah, for sure. What? You're in Boca, Fort Lauderdale. All right, great. So I get her number. And then a couple days later, I'm thinking, okay, should I text this girl? I did not text her. Okay. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. Because I realized I was like, I'm not dating a 40-year-old. Even though I'm 40, it's not happening. So I did not text the girl. I'm not going to say her name. I kind of sound like a jerk right now. All good. Um, but then I saw this story with Leonardo DiCaprio. And that was kind of the impetus. I was like, all right, this is perfect. So Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously incredible actor. Agreed. Incredible yes, actor. But sure. probably even better at being a bachelor. <laughs> right? Like bachelor of... Uh, the highest proportion, perpetual bachelor. And um, he, I don't know if you know this, but obviously he dates young, hot women. And typically, once they turn age 25, he cuts them off. That's happened more than once. Oh, we're going to go through the dating list of Leonardo DiCaprio right here. So he's dating a current girl called Camilla Marone. You know what she looks like? Do you know who she is? No. Basically, he treats women like milk. If they have an expiration date of 25, got time for a new thing of milk. Horrible. Yes, horrible, right? All right, maybe. So she's 25, and uh, let's pull up a picture of her. I don't know if we can show this on the screen. So they've been together for four years. She turns 25 in the next few months, okay? <laughs> so the prediction is that she's about to get I don't know. Through. These are what the rumors are. This is what we're going to speculate on, and then we can go over his dating history as well. He's dated Leonardo DiCaprio. By the way, how old do you think Leonardo DiCaprio is? 46. 46. Uh, he's 47 now. Okay. Oh, you're he's close. 47. Not bad. Um, by the way, I think this. he's kind of like the man. I mean, he's the modern George Clooney, in my opinion. Um, so who is he dated? There's a picture of him with Giselle, Tom Brady's wife. All right. Uh, well, when he dated her, he dated Paris Hilton, Bar Raffaele, Israeli supermodel. Oh, God. 
Hot, lover. right? Yes. Um, he dated Blake Lively before Ryan Reynolds. And he, he actually dated a girl who lived in Miami for a long time. Well, I'm friends with Nina Agdahl. She actually dated my boy Patrick and my boy Reed. That anyway, we've hung out uh, many a times. With but Leo, you've hung out? No, well, I have hung out with Leo in Miami, but I'm saying the, the Nina, uh, okay. whatever. So this is his dating history. We'll go through this. But now there's basically, there's rumors. Keep scrolling down, Eric. Can people see this on screen? Yes. Okay, so so we'll you know we'll kind of go there. Now there's rumors that basically he's back to partying with his boys a little bit more than spending time with this girl, Camila Marone. We'll go real fast. He dated Demi Moore. Just keep going. Real go. As soon as you recognize somebody, we'll just keep keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, Paris Hilton. He dated for a little while. Boom, Giselle back in the day. There's Bar Raphael. He gorgeous. You're gonna notice a similar theme here with the ladies. They're all kind of blondish, <laughs> kind of gorgeous. Well, not kind of, all gorgeous. Um, yeah, I got it. Similar theme we got going on here, Saws, right? Amber got a chance. <laughs> Saws, this I'm is past David. 25, babe. Yeah, David. Uh, this is eerily similar to my dating list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, David dated half these girls. Now, this girl, uh, back up, this girl's a brunette. Uh-oh. Lorena Ray. But look at smoke that. Smoke show, by the way. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. And now this is his current lady friend scroll up a little bit that make sure that's her name yes camilla marone okay so um long story short uh he dates beautiful women mm -hmm. uh, even longer story short once they turn 25 he tends to kind of move on so allegedly there's rumors that who knows what's going on he's spending out time so long story short again how do you feel about leo the age gap 47 24 25 uh, any initial thoughts before we get into kind of the dialogue here? Your eyes just fluttered. So let's start with you, Amber. Just endless male privilege. I don't, this this just, is male privilege. Yeah, I mean, you guys don't have a biological clock. You have nothing that tells you when you need to do something at any phase of life. Mm -hmm. You can make babies until you're dead. So, Hell of course, yeah. of course you want to date younger. Why? No man has ever said, I'm too old for you. <laughs> a guy goes... Am yes. I too old for you? Okay. Right? Valid point. I actually, that happened to me recently. Again, 40. I was with a girl recently. This is a few months ago. And I was like, look, we should hang out another time. Because we were, and she goes, she was actually British. She goes, I really like you, but I just, I, you're a little old for me. That was the first time a girl has ever said that. Mm -hmm. And she's 25. I'm like, a little old for you. We're in fucking Miami. What are you talking about right here? Like, <laughs> this is nonsense. My, my ex-girlfriend was a year younger than you. What are you talking about here? And for the first time, I was like, damn, I'm old. You know? You're just getting into a different category. I True. I do need to, you know. Because a 25-year-old probably, I mean, maybe she's assuming you're looking, maybe, at 40, maybe, you want to settle down and have That's a family. That's true, I do, I do, right. for the and record, that is eventually. And probably the exact reason why you didn't text that girl at 40. Who's well, 40? yes, because I was like, yeah. Because you're maybe not ready to, or maybe you don't want that future. She focused on business, good for her. Yes. Um, but you're looking at her now as not a potential wife because you want to have kids and that's kind of in well, a danger zone. Well, you say business, good for her. She did. She's actually a doctor. Yeah, that's uh, I, well, priorities. Well, she's a PhD. I don't know if she's like an MD, but... A doctor. I don't know. I don't know if good for her. Okay. Because... You know, society tells these women to get an education, go to work, get a uh, job. Right, right. Now she's 40 and she's not married, no kids. Uh, did she I don't look know happy? She looked very happy. So? I don't know how long she's going to be happy for. Next thing you know, she's 44 years old, unmarried, no kids. I don't know if that's the look for a, a, an attractive woman. Depends on what, what you, you want out of life. Look for an attractive. I'm just saying. You mean an attractive partner, not an attractive woman, because she was attractive. You said she looked yes, good. Yes, I'm just. Yes, yes, she looked great, um, but I don't know if that's the best. Okay, matter I don't know. and matter. The second because eventually, we keep eventually, um, uh, the goal, in my opinion, is to settle down at some point. For who? Uh, just in general. For that's not that can't be a general goal. That's your goal. Okay. Well, we're talking goals here. Not everybody has to have kids. Right. Well, here's the question. Get Let, it. Let's get Jenny's opinion here. Um, wh what's the line? Meaning, Leo's forty-seven. This girl's 24. In your mind, like, have you ever dated a guy much older than you? Yes. You have. What was that age gap? Mm, 16 years. 16 years. Yeah, that was exactly 16. what my ex-girlfriend was. 16 years. And how'd that work out? It didn't. Well, yeah. It lasted. I'm still single okay, and it lasted so why? like two weeks. Why did it not work but out? But going back to the story, it's yeah. just, it's all about 
what you want out of life. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like your friend who's 40, maybe she's thriving and living her best life and she doesn't want to be a mother. Not every woman wants to be a mother. Right, okay. So we have to stop living by society means because that is not where we're at or where this world is evolving to. Mm-hmm. So it's all what you want. If you wanted to be a dad at 30, I'm sure you would have been a dad at 30. Yeah, I almost but was. <laughs> all right. But mm-hmm. you don't want that for yourself. You no. know? So let her live her life and do what you want to do. I oh, know she's killing it. Don't I know, me. but she's I'm just saying great. like... Just, I just don't know if that's a good all, look long term. That's my opinion. But who are you to judge her? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just this. Just a dude. What, what the, if you're? What I'm if you're married with, with kids and unhappy? Show. You know what I mean. It's about your peace of mind and what you want in this lifetime. Okay. So going back to Leo, um, it's what he what he wants. Like that guy gets a woman thrown to him left and right. You have to understand. It's different than your average guy. Hundred percent. All right. Clearly. At some point. You get tired of the same Maybe. thing. Maybe. Yes. So, and that's why he trades you know? them out. But right. if he but doesn't want to be a family guy. But he's not looking why? for love. Right. Like he's uh, just looking for the woman it, look, of the moment. Everything he's doing is cool in the moment. Like Jenny said, I'm sorry, like Amber said, you know, at, at, our clock is not ticking. Like, so for me, I have a five-year plan. I'm 40. I know I'm going to, I've made it successful in business and finance. I've done my South Beach party days. I've done that all throughout my 20s. I partied enough in my 20s for 10 lifetimes, straight up. Lucky to be alive over here. And then now I have a, a plan, obviously, with Value Tame and everything that I'm doing here with the show and everything. Three-year runway with this, kill this, all good. By the time I'm 45, have millions in the bank, ready to start a family, no stress in my life. That's my plan. I'm not saying that's beautiful, but to, yes. but you don't even know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow. Well, that's true. So that's... like you can have all this planned, or something comes out of nowhere. Like if the love of your life were to walk in this room right now, and yeah. th- and completely sideswipes you. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a va- I'm not saying if I met the love of my I life, know, I wouldn't saying pursue some, it. Like, some people live on this plan, live on this clock. Like you gotta live in the moment. This is the only thing that's promised. Yeah, I I I, I partially agree with you, but there's a ninety nine point nine 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 percent chance that everyone listening here is going to wake up tomorrow. So the YOLO thing, I think, is a little far fetched because unless you're dying of cancer or, or literally one of the people Balance. that that Balance. gets hit by a train, you're gonna be okay. Um, I want to speak to your point, yes. like devil's advocate on myself, because um, you said it's not attractive, it's not a good look. I will say that as women, we have to pick a lane, and we can't, mm-hmm. unlike you, get into another lane at 40. You kind of made your bed, right? Now women can adopt, yes. and that's possible, but to have your own child, if you've committed your life to career and you're in making money, building your wealth, just like you have, yep. at this point, somebody who's been on the same track as you, yes. as a woman, we do not have the same ability to jump and be like, you know what? Actually, I want to have some, some kids. I want to have three kids. At 40, you can't do that. Exactly. You can't do that. So it, it, it for me, I'm 28. I feel overwhelmed by the pressure of figuring out if I want to focus on my career or settle down and have kids because it's not something I want right now, yeah. but I don't have 10 years to figure it out. I okay, don't. You're bringing up some very valid points right here. And ultimately, this is what we're talking about is, yeah, we're talking dating, relationships, age gaps, but... It's also different for a guy and a girl. Like I've been able to focus on my career, do my thing, pivot, take on additional things, not even worry like, well, I got to have kids immediately. Nobody's going, why aren't you married yet? Well, my mom is is like, Adam, how are you? Yeah, yeah, of course. I forgot. We have Jewish mothers. Exactly. But you said that you. I have to make choices. Yeah. So I have to pick my priorities. For a woman to have a career, you're 28. You're looking at your clock. You have some sort of clock ticking. Who was I talking with? That it was it you? I don't know. It's at, like at thirty, that clock is ticking. Like the scene in uh, My Cousin Vinny. You remember the scene? You know no, that scene? I haven't seen it. Holy shit! My cousin Vinny, Marissa Tomei. Mm. She's like Vinny. My clock is fucking ticking over here. Okay, but you, you've made a conscious decision. All right. I'm. So is this still an active decision you're making in your life? Kill it in my career. Find a man. Settle down. What about women your age? Like these are conversations that you guys have. Career versus personal. Especially life. performers. Especially, Which both of you guys are. Yes. Um, as a dancer, mm-hmm. you have a limited window already yeah. to be a dancer. Because you're like an athlete. Yes. By but age shorter, 30 something. Yeah. Less, even less. Got and it. then if you get pregnant in the middle of that, you're done. You're done early. That's it. Yeah. But if by the time you finish dancing, then you start trying to have a kid, then 
you're late to the party. Okay. And it's not like, even if I decided, you know what, I am ready. I have to find the guy first. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> and I'm important. actively working at that, okay? Yeah. Working at it very difficult. Something to... tells me you're going to be okay with that. That's very nice of you. But listen, in Miami, it's it's hard out here. That's right. There are a lot of douchebags. I haven't even in Miami. been able to get second dates. So. Um, and you, you grew up in Miami. I did. And you went to New World. You grew up in Miami, South Miami. So Jenny said that the oldest guy, that was your oldest age gap. On average, what would you say? Is there a significant age there gap? There isn't. So my thing. But I'm somebody who's not just looking to have fun, like right? Like mm-hmm. I've already been there, done that. But I, I personally feel you don't know what unless you try, right? So like I've dated guys younger than me. I've dated guys older than me. I've dated, dated guys my age. They're all very much so different. You've dated guys younger than you? Yeah. How much younger? Uh, two to three years. Really? Me yeah. Too. How'd that work out? It didn't. I obviously did. <laughs> no, I know, but none of them did. None of them did work out. But was it just like you were twenty four and they nice. were twenty three or twenty one? Yeah. Well, I was twenty three. He was twenty one. Something okay. like that. But um. But yeah. What what it, it, it it's the experience. Like people get so caught up on labeling on on dates on time frames on this. Like you just gotta live your life. I've mm-hmm. dated forty year olds who acted like twenty one year olds, and yeah, I've dated twenty one like, year olds who acted thing. like it's thing. It's it's your life the, experiences. I agree. What's the, what's the uh, oldest you, oh, the age gap? Eight years. Eight years. Well, that felt right. That felt good it. in terms of like where they were in life because they're, you have yeah. to date older to get a man who's maybe considering being in the same place you are biologically. A 28-year-old Miami. They say seven Miami. years. They say seven years is the golden number well, well, between a, a woman and There's a actually a formula. It's actually half your age plus seven. Are you familiar with this? So if I'm 40, half my age, 20 plus seven is 27, I need to be looking somewhere around 27 years old. And what about us? What's our, what's our formula? Uh, double your age minus seven. I think it's just sort of is a... Uh, really? I mean, that's just the, the... No, I don't know. I've always heard seven is the golden number. Seven years age difference. From a woman to a man, yeah. Okay. When is it weird, though? When it, When is too old? <sighs> yeah, like you said, you're not caught up... Thank you, Eric. You're not caught up on labels and just live your life. Okay. 21-year-old dating a 60-year-old? Is that creepy? Yes. Because that happens in Miami. I mean, a lot of them are sugar babies. And I feel all like that. I've seen so many of these things on TikTok. They're like, we're just it's in just, love. And they're like, but it depends what you're 70. talking about. Like, are you talking about real love? Are you talking about sugar daddies? Are you talking about in the moment when I Jenny, like, I don't like labels. I don't want labels on this. Okay? <laughs> I know, but no, but you're talking about love. Like, he's clearly not looking for love. Like, That's you know, true. I mean, it she's just depends. pretty easy to love that girl right there. You, do you know her personally? No, but she looks very lovable. Again, I don't know you're again basing screen. everything off of physical appearance. Well, okay. So yeah. is Leo. He's I, at 25. He's like, you know what? Any sign of a crow's feet? Out. <laughs> I don't know if it's that. I, I don't, so what is it? They know. probably go, hey, is this something serious? Or am I, are we in this? Okay, at what point in a relationship do you give the, like, all right, what are we doing here? Depends on how old you are, I think, also. For me, I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not just dating somebody to date them for a couple months. Like, I'd be like, How okay. many months in do you say, do you give them the talk? Three months. Three I was months. Say three too. So you'll hook up. You'll have a good time. You have a great time. Date, go to the bars. Date. Date. But three months in, you're gonna. All right, buddy. At this point, what, what like, is happening right now? Yeah, but I feel like as women, as you get older and you've dated enough, you know what you want. Very so you quickly. Set, you set the line from jump. Like the first mm-hmm. date, you're like, I'm not here for play play. Like you say that on a first date. I do. I mean, I don't date that much, but when I go out on a date, like I'm like. Uh, we have a, like, claro, how do I say that? Like, I'm going to talk uh, clear. Like, I'm going to talk straight up. You're going to be very clear. Yeah, you're going to be clear with your intentions. Right now, if when I was younger, I didn't. I didn't set any boundaries. I'm like, okay, where are we going? What are we doing? Let's go. You know, but as yeah. you get older and you know what you want because but you've already had experience. There is a fine line with that, Jenny. So um, on New Year's, uh, I was out. I'm, I'm totally single. I had a, like literally a buddy is like, hey, you, Adam, this girl, uh, Julie, uh, you guys are going to make out on, on midnight. I was like, okay. And like the girl's like, okay. It's a very good friend. Yeah, very good. Great wingman. So whatever. We have a New Year's kiss. All good, whatever. We hang out one more time other than New Year's. One, like literally we had like lunch. She's like, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Cool, whatever. Um, I look, quite frankly, during the week, I'm focused as hell. Like I'm not, I'm not worried about like, what's Julie up there? Whatever. I'm just doing my thing. I hit her up on the weekend and I was like, hey, how are you? How's your week? She goes, why are you texting me? I go, Oh, oh, what's your reasoning for texting me? I say, oh, I need a reason to text you? She goes, listen, I'm not looking for just like small talk banter. Like I need to know if this is going somewhere or not. I'm like, we've hung out twice. That's too, that's too much. Too much. 
I and think, I, I sent, you know what I sent her? So you need a chance to get to know somebody. How do you, how can you propose a deal before you even know what the terms 100%. are? hundred percent. You know what I sent her? You know, the, the picture of Homer Simpson, like going back into the bushes. <laughs> You've seen this thing before? No. The gift. Pull up Homer Simpson gift, gift. bushes. <laughs> this is what I sent her. And she yeah. goes, thank you. I'm glad to know where you stand. She thanked me. Well, she had the whole conversation with herself, basically. Pull this up. She this, decided this what is, you were. This is literally what I text her. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that was me just being like, yeah, that's a little red flag I right don't there. need to make a, I don't need to establish anything on the first date, but I do like to know what the options are. Is there a door for some? Are you in a place where you could consider? I don't need to know right now, but if it's something that's on the table for you or not. Okay, what, but Jenny? back to back to Eric. <laughs> She's laughing. Jenny wants to say something. Go, Jenny. Jenny, <laughs> let it out. Judge somebody. Judge somebody. It's not judgment. Live, it's just difference live of limitless. opinions. Live limitless it, right now. No restrictions on this conversation. It's, it's communication. Okay, I like, agree. Like there's some people that literally just like they know they want to play. So why are you gonna? continue a day if you know that person just wants to play now if there's look mm. i don't know let's see where it goes okay let's see where it goes but some people are clearly like i just want to have fun that's it but if a guy so tells you never say that, that but a, they never say that yeah they don't the say that never no, no say guys that. like look i'm really not looking for any on a first date look they I'm not do looking on for their anything tinder serious. profiles they say what i'm not looking for anything serious hookups only they say that i've seen so many of that and then what they're, they're swipe left I'm just saying, but some girls are just like, all right. Even if I am not looking for a relationship, the fact that you write that on your profile just is a turn off. Douchey move. It's just douchey. Because so, um, you don't know me. What if I am the love of your life? Why are you saying that already? I mean, already? I appreciate it. It's straight up. You're not wasting time. People waste so much time. It's time true. is money. Time Especially is money. for women, according to Amber. Well, nowadays the you can freeze your eggs, so, so it's a little so different. But. At what age does women's biological click, clock start ticking? Well, I'm what age? But nowadays you can freeze your eggs. So it's a little bit different. Not that, that you is can true. them yourself. That is but true. They usually say like there's also social by your, stigma. By your late thirties, early forties is when you it's know dangerous, it's, it's, yeah. it's you're late into 30s. the risk. You into the ri the risk zone. You? Yeah. I everybody keeps telling me like you have a little more time. Every older woman, they're like you're you're. They're like you're twenty eight. You're you have a little more time. That's what I get. Oh, I just out. thought of a story. Crazy story. One yeah. of the craziest stories I've ever had in my life. So. It's not a secret that my best friend, one of my best friends is the guy, Chris Humphreys, that married Kim Kardashian. Do you, do you, yes. you, do you know this? Okay. Yes. I was in the, in the wedding. I right. walked Chloe down the aisle, the whole thing. I lived at Kim's house for a week. I mean, we're, we're going all over there. We're on a jet to Mexico, the whole, the whole freaking thing. And I remember how, like, cause Kim is my age. Kim is 40 now. Okay. And Chris is actually five years younger. And I remember having a conversation with her. I was like, cause I'm pretty blunt. I was like. I remember being in Mexico at Joe Francis's house randomly, the guy that created Girls Gone Wild. They're like good friends with him. And, and I said, because uh, they got engaged very quickly and then they set the date. And I just sort of, you know, in passing was like, things are moving pretty quick here, Kim. She goes, yeah, yeah, I'm 30. Uh, I, I got to move quickly. My clock, like she full on said what you're saying. And then boom, 30 years old, that happens. They get married very quick. People think that it was for TV, it was for show. They were full on dating. Like it was a real thing. And I then I think over time she realized, oh, this probably isn't for me. He's more of a Midwestern guy. I'm an LA girl. I'm not changing. He's not changing. It didn't work out. But she point blank was says, I'm 30 and I'm very worried about settling down and having kids and all that stuff like that. And that's when Kanye stepped in. This is 10 after years everything. ago also. Exactly, it's 10 years ago. That's when Kanye stepped in and they got married and had kids immediately, if you recall. And then obviously that's, that's worked out. But And now what is she doing? Living her life? Now, Being young, she's 40, enjoying. 41 years old. She's banging freaking Pete Davidson that's now. That's what I'm saying. She, the least settled down guy out there. Right, because she, she's feeling like she but wants that's to what relive I'm the free People, part. Listen, I come from a Spanish culture where you're like, I thought I was going to be married by 23, having kids by 24. Really? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Cuban culture encourages yeah, like, that? Yeah, just like Latinos, like that's... You, you get married, you have kids, and you live your life, right? But living limitlessly. Living limitlessly, baby. You know yeah. it. <laughs> but we have, like, so many people are having kids and in marriages and unhappy, right? Mm -hmm. So why are you going to birth a kid if you know that you can't take care of the kid or you still have trauma that you haven't dealt with and now the kid is coming out with trauma? Like, people are thinking... Sometimes when you you think, oh, I have to get married and I have to have kids by this age because that's what society tells me. No, you do what your body tells you, what you no. feel like you need to do. You can't keep living by... Every day the metrics are changing. Every day. I, I'm basically realizing something here right now. 
that you remember we're like, what's this episode going to be about? Because mm-hmm. um, we have a few topics that we're going to cover. But ultimately for a woman, this comes down to what's more important, being a career woman or being a family woman? Is that a fair question? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's about how are you going to do that mix is which is going to come first. And I think that that's what every woman struggles to do because I thought about this and I was like, okay, I need to establish myself in a career so that I can take time off, have a baby and come back and still be relevant. A lot of women have a baby. For example, a lot of women who study marketing and then took three years off to have their kid and raise it, they come back, marketing has changed Mm -hmm. completely. Trying to get a job in the same market, now there's... People younger, right out of college, will take your job right from you. It's it's that decision as a woman. It's like, okay, which one do I do first? Or you have a kid right when you've just come out of college, and then you jump in and build yourself up, and then don't have to take breaks. It's like, how are you going to fit this puzzle? It's just a puzzle for women. How, what part fits when and where? It's, it's, and then the guy. And when does that come in? The, the, the guy's kind of important here. Right. It's, what, it's what you want out of life. Your partner has a huge tool to it, right? Is your partner always busy and working? Do you need to raise a kid completely by yourself? Right. Does your partner not work as much? Like allows you to, to work more? It literally depends on what you want. But you can create the life you want. That's what people don't realize. But choosing your life partner or choosing the baby daddy of your kid has a huge, huge effect of the lifestyle you're going to live. But you guys have a very unique scenario, meaning you give a marketing example right now, but let's use a real life example. You guys are dancers. You guys need to have, you guys I need to be look, looking good, feeling good. You know, your body needs to be right. You can't just be getting pregnant and then like you're not, it's, the, you guys getting pregnant and settling down and having family is a lot bigger deal than the marketing girl. I know, but how I do you know, balance that know, as a dancer? I know, career I know dancers ending. that have kids that still dance. You said career ending? I think so. No, Hold I know on. dancers. I know dancers that dance and, and are still, still on have tour. Kids. They're Jenny. not touring, That's but they I'm have. Ta- no, okay, so he's talking about dancing gigs. in general. You're, doing, you're doing, doing gigs. You're dancing. You're making money. Mira can baila. You're doing a lot of things. My sister was on and Mira can baila, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah, she danced with Camacho. My sister's a dancer. So, but it's, it's, it's a balance. Like you can, you can have what you want. You just got to create it for yourself. It's a balance. Of course you're going to, I mean, you can't be, you know, traveling the world. Um, if you want to be a present mother, that's another thing. You can have a kid and not be a present mother. So be CEO of a company, traveling the world, doing all this stuff and have a nanny raising your child. Right. Like, no, that's nobody another, wants that. But that's but another that's No, another there are priority. people that do want that. Yeah. Okay. You get what I'm trying to say, but it's, it goes back to what I'm trying to say. It's all what you want. You make what you want from so it. So bottom line is, what do you want? Me personally? Yes. Well, I, I lived my life, mm-hmm. right? I lived my dream of being a professional dancer, got off the road, and now I'm ready to do what I want to do business-wise, mm-hmm. allow myself space for whoever's supposed to come, you know, and then build from there. But I'm not going to rush it. I'm not just going to be like, oh my God, I'm this age and I don't have kids yet. Okay, this next guy, come. You're not going to Literally come, it. you know? Like, oh, no. well, you're giving an eye roll. What's your... What's no, the- I'm agreeing. It's like for me, the same way I feel about kids, the same way I feel about tattoos. I like them. I like the idea of them. Do I have any on my body? No. Why? Because nothing has been enough of an impact for me to put it on my body for the rest of my life. No person has come along that I was like, you know what? You are it. Because all marriage is nothing. Is That's not a big deal anymore. Kid, you have a kid with somebody. Mm-hmm. You are. The they are life. with that. Per- There's so, so many people I know who You're hate with them for their life. baby daddy. Hate yes. their the person that they chose to now have to be a character, a central character for the rest of your life. <laughs> and that affects the kids. Like so, so many people are just having kids, not worried about the kids. I know. Like this generation of kids is like insane, insane. And so many of them they used to grow up without mother, without mommy and daddy. Mm-hmm. Now they're growing up on a tablet <laughs> without yeah, well, mommy and daddy. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be selfish either and just bring kids into this world because, oh, I, I think I want to be a mom. No. You know, like, I can't wait to be a mom, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go I right can now. Wait. No, I can't <laughs> wait. Can Listen, wait. I, oh, yeah. I'm, I, uh, I what thought, age, what, what's the latest, Jenny? The latest you could see yourself having your first child? God's, latest. God's timing. You don't have a number in mind? No. 30? 40? Stop Whatever it. happens. Stop it. You're not going to wait till you're 40. Whatever happens. I don't know. Uh, I can get pregnant a week from debate. now. I don't know. Yeah. What's the debate there? The debate is, it's like, do you want to be an old mom, but somebody who lived their life or be a young exactly. mom? And then, and then we chose to live our lived. life before we have kids. So when we get our kids, we're not living by curiously through our kids. I don't want to mm. travel with my kids and see the world. <laughs> I've traveled the world now and I'm going to keep traveling. I love traveling. I go everywhere by myself, solo traveling. I love it. And I want to do it now. 
not when I have a kid and dragging them and paying a thousand dollar ticket to take them to Paris in a trip they'll never remember. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Damn. By the way, I know for a fact that there's uh, by the way, Eric, if there's any comments comments, out there. So Saeed, she said, I started having kids at 16. By 24, I had four kids. Now I'm back and have a business. It's not that deep. Unless you live in Miami, there's uh, these are hollow topics, is what she said. These are hollow topics? Yeah, and then um, let's see. And then Sergio, she she said, fact, being raised by in a Mexican household, I was raised to get, uh, you know, to get married, have kids, and have a house by 20. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So do you have a number in mind of when you would ha- want to have a kid? Like latest? Yes. Probably like 35. 35. Would There's be, a number there. Would be, yeah, I think so. If I want to have kids. I don't know if I do. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, no. I definitely want to have kids. That's I don't not know even yet. a question. Let's bring this back. Let's tie in this topic right here with Leo. Let's get back to Leo. Uh, you said Eric posed the question, at what age is creepy, right? Clearly 47, 24. They're they're good. You said you you dated a guy sixteen years older than you. It, it was fine. It just didn't work out. You saying that seven is the is a magic number. You're saying that eight was the oldest you ever dated. So what is the line in your mind? Is there some definitive line number? The girl who told me that there's fifteen. She goes, I actually like you, but and I would go out with you again. I just don't see a future with you because when you're 60, I'll be 45 and you'll be old. She's like, I'm like, you're doing math 20 years down the road. Like, she's like, yes, because I want to get married in the next few years. I'm a family. I was like, OK, all right, good for you. So is there a definitive line in either of you guys' minds? Like, all right, this is the youngest or oldest guy I would date. I wouldn't. Serious. I, me personally, yeah. I wouldn't date a guy past like 50 plus. Oh, so it's 50 is the number. For me personally. Yes. So you would get a, date a guy double your age. Yeah. Oh, wow. Not me. No, what's your number? Probably like, if I'm 28 right now, about 40 would be max. Okay. So like on your Tinder profile. Yeah. You, what do you have it going up to? Uh, I deleted Tinder, first of all. I deleted all oh, the apps as I'm of so like sorry. last week. No. Yes. Just because I'm done with them. But for what's that range, age? I yes. think I did like 30 to 45. Oh, so you went up to 45. Yeah, because I'm in Miami and the experience of going on dates with like a little bit older man is nice, even if I'm not looking to settle down. Is the older the man is, the more successful they have to be. Meaning you'll date a 20, 29 year old, 30 year old who's kind of figuring out their career. True. But you're not dating a 43 year old if he's fucking broke. Do you understand what I'm saying here? The older a guy is that you're dating, the more successful they have to be. Yes or no? I mean... Not that I wouldn't say that statement because I've dated a guy who was 25 and more successful than a guy that was 32. Okay, but I'm so saying if you're gonna, that, I don't mean but, like that, but like if you're gonna date a guy significantly older, the 16 yes, year old, no, guy, he has to ha- he has to be established, like he has to. I think established is a better word than successful because I think okay. it's like just what about, is established versus successful? What does somebody that mean? who's grounded, who's who knows their plan, even if they're not making millions or they don't, they've got it figured out and they're okay. hustling and they have energy and they're like they've got some some shit figured out. Hmm. How, how much money a year is established? Uh, hmm. Between fifty to six, like as a minimum, fifty, fifty yeah. k. So, so forty years old, fifty k a year minimum. Minimum. That's okay. very. What about you, Jenny? Low. Somewhat established. Yes, that's very. Um, that's no, not that, low, no. but that's that's just median income in America. There's Does nothing, he have a car? Does he have a house? Does he have? Yeah. Hey, he's he have he a like, car stuff, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, is he, is he taking Listen, a bus I'm sorry, in Miami? Pero I'm not taking my kids in Ubers everywhere I go, okay? Say, sí, I've ever that, of course. Okay. Okay, but go ahead. What were you saying? Does he got a car? Does I'm he just car? saying, saying, you're he, saying, what is established? How much, you, Eric asked he, how much money a year. Yeah, but I'm saying, I mean, he could be 50K, but still living at home. So True. what are we talking about? True. I love when I Jenny gets a little Latina fiery. That's like zing. Because you guys are so quick to ask questions without context. And it's like, there's more yeah, than just that Eric, one question. Sorry. Get it together, dude. Honestly, <laughs> you're going to like cancel culture ASAP. Um, okay, so what do you think happens here with Leo and this girl, Camila? Based on his track record, he's probably going to cut her off by the time the 25-year-old milk expiration thing happens. What do you think? Because she's going to be 25 in the next few months. Let, so we'll, we'll, we will revisit this. Give a prediction. I think you'll stay with her. You think so? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nah. You think it's cutting off? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Well, well Leo, we wish you the best. You're a freaking stud. Uh, keep... Keep doing you, bro. Hold out. Hold out. Set the bar high the and uh, keep, uh, yeah, his track record is pretty impressive. Derek Jeter, that's another guy. If you oh, know yeah. Derek Jeter. Baseball. Derek, she, she loves Derek Jeter. He was the same thing as Leo. He finally settled down. Now he's a, a married man established. George Clooney, 
he did it longer than anybody. He found a woman who is not only attractive, but is a, a, a game changer in the legal world. And she's bringing a lot to the table. In his age range? I mean, age range. I don't, I mean, no, he's no. 60 years old. I think she's probably, 40. I would have guessed my age. I don't know, but they're doing great. But great. basically guys, you know. Eventually want a, the same woman yes. every, every day. I'll tell you one last piece and then I want to get your opinion on something else. I remember being, this is when I used to be in the nightlife business um, in my early 20s and before I got into finance. I remember looking across the club. Uh, there was a major, major club promoter uh, at the time. He's still around. He has a bunch of pizza shops in South Beach. And I remember he was kind of like a little bit chubbier. He was balding. He was kind of letting himself go a little bit. It was a Tuesday night. He was out in the club arguing with his girl on a Tuesday night in South Beach. I was probably 24 at the time, 25. He was probably 44, 45. And I looked at him and I said, I'm never going to be this guy. I'm never going to be that dude, 45 years old, Still in the club, promoting, and- you know, dad botting it up and not, uh, it's just, it's, uh, you have to make a change at some of your point. And you did. Yay. And I and now did. Yay. Here. And now, but, but and now I have some story. clarity. That's what so anyway, speaking of dad bods, uh, Leo, I, I believe he's the guy who made dad bods famous. So this was the, the, the picture that at least I remember that made dad bods famous this was leonardo dicaprio on drugs rolling around and i believe this is central park in new york city with a nerf gun uh water gun just having the time of his life okay and so i mean when did you start hearing about the term dad bods yeah, how long probably ago within the last five maybe years. five ten years ago yeah. dad bods became a thing right and let pull up some pictures of other famous dad bods because i want to get your guys opinions <laughs> on this so there there was a study I love done. Adam Sandler. I love Adam Sandler. Okay, so Adam Sandler, click on that. There was a study done. You pull up some pictures of famous fat. Look at Will Smith. There was a study done um, this past year that said 75% of single women preferred dad bods over ripped guys with abs, six packs, and all that. So mm-hmm. basically, beer belly looking dudes over guys with six packs. So. We're looking at these pictures. We're talking about Leo. He made this famous. There's Seth Rogen. There's a dad bod if I've ever freaking seen one right there. Um, Robin Thicke looking a little thick with a couple C's right there. Who else you got here? There's Jack Black. Boom. Hit on that is more than a dad bod. That is a Beer keg. Guy. That That's is a that. god bod. And then pull up this picture over here of um, not David Beckham right above him. You got um, what's homie's name right here? It's total stud of a kid above right right there. What's his name again? Zach Efron. Zach Efron. Ripped. Diesel. So ladies, dad bods or abs bods? Do you have a strong opinion on this? Oh, yeah. You do? Yes. Go ahead, Amber. Men, you have the best marketing of all time. Leave it to men to brand <laughs> a dad bod as sexy while we're here fucking doing BBLs and every woman is investing in completely reinventing her body and dad bods mm. become hot. Oh, yeah, man. Let yourself go. It's fine. It's sexy. Good for you. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not, uh, you think it's just a marketing, it's a PR spin? Yeah, I think that there may be some psychological aspects to it that dating a guy with a dad bod may be as a woman you feel a little bit more comfortable just like being your natural self and not mm-hmm. like in the gym fighting to 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 make it to the female standard of beauty maybe that's why they like it it's like comfier it's more approachable in a relationship sure but no i'm attracted to the muscles so you're more into the abs again it's so th- seven, the people listen. who come with the abs Yes. tend to not be highly emotionally intelligent okay, so because you're they're saying, investing you're saying, in their bodies. But you're saying that the, 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 the hotter and the more ripped you are, the less emotionally available you are? That's a very big general yes. generalization, but I would say I tend to, tend to think the same with women too. So if you had a Leonardo DiCaprio, dad bob looking dude, or Zac Efron ripped chisel dude, you're saying you prefer the Zac Efron type? My eyes go there first. Okay. How about you, Jenny? My track record shows abs. <laughs> <laughs> so what? You date athletes, ripped guys. Just like I mean, I don't like them ripped. Like I don't like guys like no, guys no. that are in the gym and they're like, and they're no. making all these noises. And oh, I hate you that. Know, like, okay, I, hate so that. I have a theory about that. I have That's a theory not, about that, yeah, but I'll save theory? it for I'll save it for an X rated show. Don't save it. Um, yeah, I like them. I like them lean, lean mm-hmm. cut, but muscular. Cut, hmm. cut, cut. Like, you don't shredded. have to be, no, you don't have to be super shredded, but I like you like lean and like. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but same. Okay. But when like once we're together and we have kids and you if you get yeah, a dad you look bod, like I'm, a dad bod, I'm, like hot. I'm cool with it. Like you don't have to be like you know what I mean. I'm not but saying. Guys, but you gotta so be cool while you're having single, no bug kids, bug. you want the the ripped guy. Yeah. But when they start to have kids, like if we have kids and that happens, and, and then they become a dad, and, and they literally become you a get dad, the title. yeah. And yeah. my body changes too. Accept of me for course. two, honey. Like we both accept each of other for course. how we look. Well, do you want to be the hot one in the relationship? Like meaning, if you get let yourself go a little bit and your dude was ripped. Would you feel self conscious versus you? You girls are obviously in shape. Your dancers, you're hot, and your your man isn't as hot as you. Where does that? You always that... tend to see a hotter woman with a less attractive man. Yes, that is always the okay. makeup. Well, of course, because men are more visual and women are more looking for other things. You know. Uh, so you're asking if it's more comfortable. You feel more secure being a hotter yes. one in the relationship. I like being hot with my man. Yeah, it's nice when you have mean? somebody who like we're both hot they're together. They're an extension oh. of you. Yeah, yeah, as couple. They're an extension yeah. of you. You want to be proud of your person. Okay. I but don't, you don't like you don't have to be the most beautiful thing in the world. You know what I mean? Like Are I, you talking about man or yourself? No, a man. I'm just, even ourselves. Like there's so, always going to be somebody pretty. You're always going to be somebody better. But I mean, listen, Amber, you 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 said that that it's a marketing ploy. That's yes. amazing. I kind of think it is. But Women said 75% of them preferred the dad bods. They could have said they want the ripped guys like you guys just said. Let, so walk me through the process. Put me a the list mindset of celebrity of women. women who have yes. bodies that are letting themselves go in the same range of yes. characters. If you had Jen Aniston and Courtney Cox and whatever, Nicole Kidman, nobody would be like, oh, it's so sexy. They're, they're mom bods. <laughs> no, well, that the, what's funny is I don't know if you want to pull up this article if you have the link. The whole article was dad bods are, are now famous, but are mom bods Dad bods next? are hot on celebrities. Dad- Where's the poll of women saying dad bods are hot, just normal men? It's okay. those celebrities. Of course, Leo DiCaprio and all of the, a lot of those men are hot in our minds and seeing them as like real men. And it's, and it's what women associate dad bods comes with. Yeah, it it's with? men's that they're dads. They're like, we're, we're yeah. thinking of them as father figures. That's sexy. So it's not exactly. just like, the they're body, not so, it's what they, comes, comes with, with the it. body. Exactly. It's, it's he's the dad, a dad pushing he's a, the stroller. He's, like, he'd rather fold laundry. He's, he's taking yeah, care of the he's dishes. Not self- he's paying the bills. He's bringing, he's bringing like home the bacon. Dad bought like chips on the couch. Yeah. Nintendo, that's what Okay, so we are missing a key ingredient here. Yes. A key ingredient in the dad bod is the fact that you are a dad. <laughs> okay. Exactly. It's you're not a that poppy. You're, you're, da- you're not. You're a poppy. You can't have a dad bod yes. without being a dad. You're, well, you know, some of us <laughs> I mean, out there. Can, yeah. But. So, so that's a key ingredient. Is that it's the connotation of what comes with the dad bod is that you're right. a dad. You're taking care of the kids. You're you're paying the bills. You're you know you're making you're the bringing home best. the bacon. Okay. You're taking care of the family. You're a family man. Yes. And that is attractive to yes, women, listen. not the beer gut. All right. right. Everything we just talked about, we've gone off on tangents, but this is dating 101. Yeah, go ahead. All Jenny. right. She sat up. A woman, yes. <laughs> because I'm gonna break it down real quick and real fast. Let's hear it. A woman, mm-hmm. you ask her how her relationship is with her father, that will tell you so many things you need to know about the relationship. All right? Women, what they seek, a lot of women, what they seek in men is what they wish they seeked in their father. Mm-hmm. All right? So th- if they know you're a good father and you're present and you're, you're not so selfish or self-centered, that already warms their heart because that's what they want to attract. That's what they want as a spouse. That's what they want as the father of their own children. So it comes with a sense of like, oh, he's mature. Oh, he gets life. Oh, he gets this. He's not just in the gym every day working out and an airhead and doesn't understand everything. This is speaking generally. I'm not speaking specifically. That's not the case Go, for everything. keep going. You know what I mean? So what, when it comes to stuff like that, when women see dad bods, that's what they associate with. Like, oh, like that nurture, that this, that, that. So it's not about the dad body. It's about the, what's inside of that dad body and what comes with being that. Jenny fucking Jenny Valdez. Dad, like, now you know. Now you know. Dad bods 101. I mean, you want to clap back on her? Or do you want? What do you want to do here? Uh, clap. No, clap. Clap for. Not clap, clap for. Back. Her. That's She's ladies supporting exactly ladies right said. there. Facts. Um, so are mom bods next? No, are mom bods ever going to be a thing? I happen. would wish to live in a world where, where mom bods are a thing. And cellulite where are stretch celebrated. marks, cellulite, saggy boobs. Like where all that is a thing. I would no. love that. Instead, well, is classic- it like Victoria's Secret's kind of doing that a little bit? Like the, the whole Ashley yeah. Graham thing? Oh, sure. She's, she's thick a with trend several set. Cs. She's yes. a trendsetter. I love that Lizzo. woman. Lizzo? Is Lizzo I ever going to be hot? I love that woman. Lizzo's hot. 
You think so? She's hot in her own way. Yeah. Yeah, in her own way. Okay. Yeah, but so but are mom bods ever going to be a but thing? That's not like about that. I would I hope so. That's about like women being coming in different shapes and sizes. Okay. Or yeah. They're still young and like. Do under you know? 30. Do you know mm. what? Listen, as women, you know how powerful we are. We literally hold the portal to life. Yeah, literally. I, well, I, no objection there. We Jenny. hold the portal to yes. life in between our legs. Like, how powerful is that? Yeah. All right. So, to so any woman watching this who doesn't know how powerful she is, now you know. Wow. <laughs> okay. On top of that, in that transformation, mm -hmm. our body changes. Also, and what we need is more men to come out and appreciate our transformation. We need to appreciate for ourselves, mm -hmm. but men need to appreciate that too because you're walking the street. Yes, a beautiful woman's gonna walk by, but has she birthed your child? Has she breastfed your child? But like it's, it's what comes with. I it. just hold on real quick. And I just want. I just. I, got, I gotta say, mom, I appreciate you. I love they you. I'm thinking of you right now. For the for the single ladies out there, I love my mom. I appreciate. I have a great relationship with my mom. Yes. Much like Leonardo DiCaprio, you're I will take fast. my mom to the Oscars. In between my mom's legs is the cradle of life. Yes. Respect. <laughs> That's where you came out of. Thank you. I appreciate that. So shout out to the moms out there. And shout out to Jenny for just crushing that little thing right there. Yeah, you killed it. I, um, I'm kind of speechless right there, Jenny. That was like a very, uh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was good stuff right there. That was a segment ender. That was a segment <laughs> ender. I think, I think we can move on right we there. We got a transition. Time to transition. All right, let's get into this next story right here because Jenny just dropped the mic right there. Did you, did any of you guys are tennis fans or no? no? No. Okay, so do you, who are the best tennis players in the world? Do you have any names that come to mind? Serena Williams? Yeah, that's, we so, only Okay, know the Serena sisters. Williams. Shout out to Serena Williams. But no, we're talking the men's tennis players. Oh, that okay. I really don't know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a debate. There's this guy, the Djokovic. There's, there's Federer. And there's a guy, Nadal. Now, this guy, Nadal, just won the Australian Open out in melbourne australia right there okay right. and he's celebrating post-match and basically he went to celebrate they gave him champagne to celebrate and he spit it out he spit it out he goes no no no, no i'm not drinking i haven't drank in four months and that is part of the reason why i have this success right here so yo respect to him for not drinking and that brought up a thing to me like i once went i don't know the longest i think i went six months without drinking six months now i think that was a, a while ago um, maybe the longest time I've gone without a drink is maybe a month these days. Do you guys have any strong feelings on drinking, not drinking? I, I know we wanted to take a shot before the show. Jenny said, no, I do. that's not happening. I'm actually glad you brought this up because yes. I was in a Miami club this weekend and at a table and guys kept being like, Hey, can I get you a drink? I'm like, I'm good. You don't drink. No, I, I'm just, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And they're like, the more. You tell people that you're not drinking, the yes. more insecure they become. People can't fathom the idea of being out and just being comfortable being yourself. Mm -hmm. Dance is my drug. When I go out, I go out to dance. And the more sober I am, the more fun I am, the more fun I have. Because I'm comfortable with myself. I don't need liquid courage. I got enough courage. Liquid actually makes me less sure of myself. Mm. It makes me... Uh, more loose and not in a good way <laughs> okay like i i don't like the decisions i make i don't like driving under the any kind of influence in miami there's no public transportation you have to drive or take a 50 dollar uber i rather not drink my night is going to be better if i don't drink wow always so what's the longest you've gone without drinking i don't even take you don't drink i don't really really if, no i just don't Free alcohol, if it's there, fine. Like I'll drink it, but I don't like drinking at mm. all. I like sugar, so cocktails are nice. But you know, you'd rather have chocolate. Is if what they, you're saying. if the bar handed out chocolate, I'd be so down. <laughs> but I'd you're gonna rather. get yourself a mom bod. You don't want that. No. Okay. Well, she'll dance it off. I will. There dance it is. is my drug. Respect to you. It so, is. You, I mean, you're not a big drinker. Is I, what it seems. I love wine. Okay. Love wine. Red wine? You're a red wine kind of guy? White kinds. wine? All kinds? Red wine at night, white during the day, sometimes rosé, depending on the occasion. Love my wine. Okay. And I do drink, but for fun, off of radars, not when I'm working. Okay, cool. But I'm saying when you're out in clubs. Yeah, and I drink. Yeah, okay. I drink. Do you drink um, and get drunk? I drink and I get drunk. And do you like, do you have more fun when you're drunk? It's just a different experience. Okay. Like, I'm the girl that I go out to dance, right? Like, 
I am on the dance floor. Yeah, give me the music out. video on the dance floor okay. by myself. I don't care if somebody. I am the same. And it's cool because lately, like a lot of women come and they want to dance too. They're me like, too. oh, she's having such a great time. Like I want to join that. Yes. So you're making it acceptable for women to come and just let loose and not feel not feel like they're judged because you're not judging yourself, right? Yeah. So sometimes I'm not gonna lie, alcohol does let me get a little more loose and feel like, oh, not everybody's like watching me, right? Oh. So I can like be more of myself. You know, which is something I'm working on, right? In in my personal journey of self growth, like being able to just do that without anything, right? But it does, it does, it does uh, calm me down a little bit. Like if I have a drink, it'll calm me down a little bit to just be like, all right, let's go live your life, girl. Hey. Yeah, yeah. What about what about um, drinking too much and making some bad decisions? Oh, I've listen, been there, done that. Been yes. there, done that. Never made what? That. Like, would you share some of that? <laughs> I think you should go to Amber and then come back to me so I can think about it. <laughs> Yo, listen, I have never been the girl people had to take care of. Really? Never in my life. Mm. Okay. I've never been that girl. And I've I've taken care of so many that I, it gives me anxiety when I'm around girls that are really drunk. When I see them, I get really anxious. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like being in clubs and seeing that girl and her friends are trying to pick her up and the bouncer and she's puking on herself. It gives me so much anxiety. I hate it. So that's why I never let myself get that. Part. Well, never. in Miami, like you brought this up, Amber, uh, look, uh, in, in the nightlife business, you see it if there's 10 um, tables in the club, let's just say, probably seven of them are paying and three are free. Right. The promoters have tables. They're, they're bringing the pretty girls. The girls come in, save that money. They're not paying for drinks. Drink all you want. Get as toasty as you want. You're going to hang out the promoters. And those are the girls. They're not paying for tables. They're not paying for anything. They mm-hmm. tend to get very sloppy. Listen, I was at the club this weekend, and I've never seen so many people try so hard and not have a good time. Like, I don't think anybody's having a good time. You have like 50 girls packed into one booth. They can't move. Yeah. Then nobody's approaching you. How could somebody approach you? You're like third. <laughs> what club are you at? No. Vendome. Uh, and and the best one is this. Yes. All I'm at doing... the club. Let right. me break. Hand, cocktail in one hand, phone in the other. And they're like this when the whole time. When did we come out to be on social? Yeah, come out well, so that you can. if you don't document the time you're at the club, were you Listen, even at the, the club? Best, the best moments are yeah. when they're not documented. Of yeah, course. touche that. 100%. All right, so speak about these best moments of when you were drunk. Yeah. And you, uh, Go ahead, Jenny. What story comes to mind of maybe a bad decision or two you made because you were too drunk? Um, I think growing up when I was younger, living in the industry I was living in, mm-hmm. um... I didn't know how to differentiate work from play, and which is why I'm so big on it now. So being in that, I was maybe drinking in environments where my judgment Mm -hmm. wasn't always the best, and it gave room for things to happen. You know, so now I'm very big on like, if I'm working, I'm working, and that's it. But if I'm on my free time with my friends, with my girlfriends, like going out, having fun, that's a different story. So you draw you know? a line. You draw I a line draw where a you line. say, "Yeah." But I'm also somebody that I don't get drunk and get like sloppy. Like I get mm-hmm. drunk, and some people don't even know I'm drunk. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Like I'm I, one I, of those people. Like I'm always like, I'm so <laughs> messed up right she's now. She's like, but... she's just very quiet. Right. I'm here. I, I, I actually respect what you're saying right now because I was actually just at a business conference down in uh, in Miami, is staying at the Trump Doral, and I go to a business conference once a month. Let's say right. And growing up in Miami in the nightlife business, I've, again, spent many and many and many a times drunk, wasted, all that partying, drinking, whatever. So when I go to these business conferences, sometimes they're in Dallas, sometimes they're Atlanta, some, they're, just, they're all over the country. I'm going to one in um, Charleston, South Carolina uh, next month. And we go and there's all these business guys, successful guys, uh, a little bit older, at least in, in the financial services insurance business. All of them. I'm not saying all of them, but people who are kind of like trying to get away, they are drinking. They are, they, they're like, they basically are like, look, I've got three days away from my wife and kids. I'm about to tear up Charleston. I'm about to tear up Dallas. Because and, they don't, they need it. Uh, that's my point. And then they come to me because I'm obviously, you know, the, one of the younger, cooler guys in, in this industry. And they're like, Adam, let's go, bro. We're hitting the town. You're coming with us to the strip club. I'm like, Bro, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm here for three days to crush it in business. And then if I want to get tipsy turvy topside, I'll just do it in South Beach in Miami. I'm not, right. I don't need to hang out with, you know, 40, like yeah. literally 40, 60 year old men to go rip it up in Dallas. It's just not a good look. So I do, I do appreciate what you're saying is that I can distinguish between business 
and pleasure. And if it's a business trip, I'm focusing on business. Like last night, I was staying at the Trump Hotel. I'm getting texts from the guys. Yo, bro, we're at the bar. Where are you at? I'm like, dude, I'm in my hotel room, 10 o'clock, like getting ready for the PBD podcast in the morning. I like I don't need to, I don't need to hang out with you guys and 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 shoot the shit. No. But like to you said, they get three days to get away, and this is like their escape to just rip it up away from the wife, away from the kids, and a lot of some some of these guys, and this is what like the. The, 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 the secret elephant in the room, as you start to drink, your inhibitions start to go. You kind of maybe mm-hmm. take your ring off. Right. Maybe you start to, it's just a you know. Gateway. It's a bad, Exactly. You start to maybe, I don't know, it's not a big deal yeah. if and I talk to this girl at the bar. You blame it on the alcohol. You blame it on the alcohol. Blame it on the honey. Blame it on the honey. Blame it on. You know, talking about working, yeah. my industry, we comedians, we often get paid in drinks. Drink tickets. That's literally how yes. I get paid. Yes. And so. 100%. And, and I, I hate it because you're just. Most, I guess some comedians need a little drink to get on stage. Not me. Any yeah. kind of any kind of influence will be like uh, debilitating for me and my set. But that's it's in my world so much. Mm-hmm. Every night, comedians go out three or four times to hustle. They're drinking five five times a week, and there's no separation. Yes, of course. You have to because then you're like, what else? Well, like this is how I'm getting paid, so I might as well take advantage. Yes. And yeah, it's creating bad habits early. I never feel great after drinking i mean like wow that was amazing by the way you bring up a good point when i i got out of the nightlife because i used to do stand-up comedy at the uh, just everywhere ever you know the places down there um i would get paid in drink tickets at the club drink tickets at the comedy club and get paid occasionally in laughs if i did a good joke time you know uh, and i was like i'm sick of getting paid in laughs and drink tickets i gotta figure out a way to make some money look what you did and look what i did now i got my own financial show talking about getting drunk but i just think drinking is so socially acceptable it's so much worse than some of the other uh drugs out there that you can choose to you know whatever turn yourself down i think people like to drink because it like for some people it turns them up for me it turns me down okay in terms of my energy and my like vibe some people they need that but like drinking for the amount of people that have died and things have bad have happened and you become addicted to alcohol and becomes liver problems and becomes behavioral problems. And then that gets transferred in the portal to the next kid. Mm-hmm. That is ongoing. Yeah. Um, Want to get, obviously take a financial angle on this. We talked yeah. about oh, how, save ma- that money. Yeah, how many, <laughs> clearly how much money people spend at I bars so or much. clubs. Um, the, we talked about last episode, how many dates until a guy buys, you, you buy a guy dinner, take pay for the date. Um, you meet a guy at the bar, he's obviously going to be buying a round of drinks. Do you ever buy a round of drinks for a guy? Has that ever happened? You say, I got this one. Is that a thing that ladies do? I've done it for my friends. But a guy you're with, like a guy, like, honey, I got this. Let me get the, like, if, if you're with a guy and he's with a buddy or so, like, if I meet you at the club and you're with Amber and you're with oh, the two girls. Oh, we just met at the club? Oh, no, just, yes, maybe we just met or maybe, like, we know each other. Rounds on me, hundred bucks done. Rounds for everybody. Do you ever do that for a guy? Nope. No, it's a hard I no for him. Hard no. Yeah. If me and I a guy have gone my, on a date yeah. and we went to dinner and then we yes. go and get drinks, I'll buy the drinks. I like doing that. So you will do that. The yeah, guy if we're on a date and we went to dinner and he covered yes. off a good meal, yeah. like and not then we Chipotle, just said, not, not Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> if he covered a big meal and then we yes. went to, I like doing that as yeah. an act of, of courtesy. Like, yeah. And what okay, is that? Walk that. me through that mentality of why a woman now the guy just bought you dinner. Why you would pay for drinks? I want to show that like I appreciate and value your money, and I don't need you to throw it at me. I'm an independent woman, and I make my own money, and like just that gesture, men appreciate a lot, mm-hmm. and like that buys me a lot of credit, you know. Um, but for men that I just meet, fuck no. <laughs> They're One, paying. because I also don't drink at the club. Right, I'm not, not buying drinking. myself drinks. Okay. You know? Yeah. You? Do you have a strong uh, feeling Yeah, no, I mean, this? if I just met you, I'm definitely not paying for your drink. But it, I've yeah. gone out and I've paid for my friends. Like, yeah. I have a lot of guy friends or, like, my brother. Like, guy friends is different. It's your homie. There's this, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Or, you know, if, if it's a guy that I'm seeing, I'll, I'll pay. I'll tell you one story. Like, I, yeah. um... In Miami, believe me, I don't... It's very rare for a girl to be like... Adam, don't worry, I got this one. Like, never happens. I, I, this is 10 years ago. I went to uh, Australia, and I was in Sydney. And 
me and I was with my buddy Brendan and we were there for New Year's. Like we, it was the first year I ever, I was 27 years old, 28 years old. First year I ever made a hundred grand or more. Like I was like, this is, I got so much money. Like it was a big deal for me at the time. And I was like, we're going out Australia. He actually just got laid off from the airlines company recession. He had like two free round tree tickets all over the world. I cut a deal with Brendan. He's like, he's like, I got the plane first class Australia. I'm like, I'm paying for the hotels. Let's do it. Me and Brendan are ripping it up. If you're watching Brendan, I love you, bro. Anyway, we get to a bar. We see these two girls, ladies, would you drink it? Can we buy you a drink? Boom. We're having a drink. We finish our drinks. The, the girl goes, I'll butcher this Australian accent. She's like, all right, you bought the first round. Next round's on us. What are you guys drinking? I'm like, am I being fucking punked right now? What are you talking about? She goes, yeah, in Australia, it's called shouts. You got the first shout. We got the next shout. And they bought the drinks. I was waiting for Ashton Kutcher to walk in and be like, what is happening right now? But just because I was so preconditioned in Miami that the guys pay, the guys pay, the guys pay. Then in Australia, the girls, it's like part of the culture for them to get. How much were the beers? I mean, this is 10 years ago. I don't know, I know whatever they were. I but I'm just saying, the drinks are more expensive here, too. Or whatever they were, 10 bucks a pop. I buy whatever. drinks in, in Czech Republic. This shit is a dollar. Okay. <laughs> Let me buy for everybody. No, Australia is, is not a third world country. Like, they were real, real drinks. But that is a thing. Guys paying for drinks, you know, yeah. women don't have to. In my opinion, by the way, I did a poll on my Instagram. I got to get the results. Should a guy always, 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 always pay on the first date? What do you think the results were? The guy on the first date should a guy always, always. pay? I well, hope it was a hundred. Or is it? Or your is it? I hope it was a hundred. No, I don't. I'm gonna check the results right now. But also, or, your audience is highly is male. No. No, no, no probably two thirds, one third. Meh. Let me see those insights. hundred percent. Two thirds, one third are the responses here. Should a guy no. always pay? We'll see about that. Um, Wait, but I do want to pose a question because yeah. this is a finance show and we're talking Go. about money. Yes. For the people watching and for us listening, how did you take from like, I'm working in the club, I'm promoting, I'm this and that, because that's a lot of people in Miami's hustle. Mm -hmm. How did you convert that into finance? How did you build that lane for yourself? Yeah, that's a, thank you for that question. There's actually a part of a, a question that I actually wanted to do because we talked about Rafael Nadal not drinking for four months and he basically said I had to sacrifice and I had to basically... I, there's certain things I had to give up. He's from Spain. I guess, you know, they do a little uh, wine over there. The hardest thing that I had to do being in the nightlife business is I said, I, if I'm in Miami and with my connections and my inroads with this, I need to get the hell out of here. And I moved to Boca for mm. when I was 27 years old and I got out of the environment of partying. And then I had no partying and I immersed myself in a totally new career. So... What I had to do, sometimes you need to go Remove ghost yourself. for a while. Sometimes you need to say, look, the, the environment that I'm in is not conducive to where I want to be. So let me remove myself from this because I'm going to get texts. I'm going to get calls. Yo, what up? We're out. You know, you're only come by. Say what up? Like, I'm in Boca, bro. You know, I'm an hour away. I'm not driving down on a random Tuesday night to hit the club. And yes, for the first year, it sucked. The first year I did the financial, I was a f cold caller basically, which is just smiling and dialing. I made five thousand dollars in my first year, five grand in a year. I was crashing on couches, but I was away from it all. I said, "I'm going to figure this out." The next year, I made a hundred grand. I'm doing the Australia thing. From five thing. to hundred. From five to a hundred, exactly. But so, what did you do? Like, how did you? How did I you just create double, that for yourself? I just doubled down on getting good at this one particular skill set. Sales and finance, sales, exactly. And then with that, commissioned, networking, you know, not being afraid, getting up there, like almost like a comedian. It is. Like almost like a comedian, you know, when a comedian's not going to be good, they kind of get up and they're like, hey, you know, so I'm really nervous right now, but like, I just wanted to like, and versus the comedian that gets up there with confidence, he's like, what up? How are we all feeling out there tonight? All right. Give it up for the last commit. Like there's a different, like confidence. you need to build up that, that muscle of confidence that's imperative if you're going to be in sales or whether you're a performer or whether you're a comedian, dancer, whatever it is, confidence is attractive. How did you get that confidence? Well, I'm just kind of born with it. If you know, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe he's born. Ay, mi madre. Now we know why he's single. <laughs> no, I don't think, I think I've always been confident, but I wasn't confident at this particular skill set right so, so how I, did you get confident practice after? practice 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 getting good at something getting good confident. at something exactly well what, what does malcolm gladwell sell uh, say in his book 
You know, you have to do something for 10,000 hours to become an expert at it. I did that. So rather than partying, rather than do, going out and doing all that, I doubled down on this particular thing. And now it's just going off without clockwork. And that's actually at a networking event. I That's where I met PBD, Pat. And 10 years later, we just kept in touch, kept in touch. And now I'm on Valuetainment. I have my own show. And it's just the compound interest effect of getting good at something and networking and having, here it is, a positive attitude. Having a positive attitude. There's something so attractive of just being positive. Okay? Good about energy. Good energy and attitude. Like, as awesome and as pretty and as cool as you guys are, if you had attitudes, how long would it be until, like, you know, Amber really got, she's, she's, she's got just kind of this, like, stuck up attitude. It's not. I literally got branded at birth. What's that? Amber Joy. Amber Joy, there it is. That's it. Like I was yeah. a happy kid always. Attitude is a big freaking deal. Um, so what would you tell people who don't have a good attitude? Yo, how, Jack, how, like how can they how can they work on that? Well, I'm not the attitude expert, but just knowing that your ego is not the amigo, and yeah, that's that cute. you got so many of those smiling and dialing. I don't know. Ego. Just, <laughs> ego, not the. I don't know. It's we just need a everyone can improve somehow. Everyone can improve somehow. Self awareness. Exactly. A thing. Well, you know, you got to look in the mirror and figure out. You know, there's so many people out there that it's like my boss sucks, man. You know, I, I hate this thing. It's it, it's like there's always that person that it's their fault and it wasn't me and I would have kept the thing, but they suck. It's so hard to be like, dude. Accountability. You, you were you were late to work five times uh, this this month. You know, you 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 didn't actually put in the work. You, you know, if you're supposed to read the the book or the whatever, you didn't kind of read it. You didn't show up to the meeting. You 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 just you you. you it's so hard to be like, I gotta improve. I gotta get better. I gotta get faster. I gotta get stronger. I gotta become a better dancer. I gotta get funnier. I gotta sit and write the jokes. Yeah. I kind of suck at this dance move. Let me fucking figure this out. It's so hard to do that. It's so easy to say, well, the booker doesn't like me, and they just kind of you know, or like the, the dance instructor, she just doesn't like me. It's so hard to be like, I gotta get better. Yes, and I do want to add this. Mm -hmm. I'm really big on the attitude of gratitude. There it is. So yeah. when you have a moment where you feel stuck or stressed out or like you feel like you're negative Nancy, literally just list five things that you're grateful for in your head. Yep. And it gets you back to that moment of just let me show up in a positive light instead mm -hmm. of being. Confidence comes from being happy internally. So if you're trying to look for your confidence, go back to the source. What is not making you happy? Fix it. Not from external things. Fix it on your own. And when you're happy, you have the energy to go after things. When you're constantly in a bad mood, it takes up all of your, your mental space. Definitely. There's no space left to go out and be passionate. That's why I always say bullies are never passionate. Bullies don't have any space. Like nobody who's passionate is a bully in my opinion. Because why? You're filled with happiness. You're going after your goals. You don't have time to look and judge other people and criticize them if you are focusing on what you do best. So talking about trying to find where you can be confident and take that, you know, $28, $5,000 a year to mm -hmm. you, you figured out what wasn't really making you happy. You thought nightlife, Miami, this is making me happy, but you're like, I don't have enough money. That's not. So you mm -hmm. fixed it. You made yourself happy Touché. and then got your confidence. Awesome. Also, well, you had a good mom. That's true. That, shout out we to all my have good mom. moms. Can I Everyone, just say it? Yes. Shout, shout out, out to, to the moms, moms out there. I love you. The She's watching. Life is, that's awesome. So thank you. But by the way, thank you for your great attitude. And thank you for the gratitude of your amazing attitude. Not only are they lovely, not only are they smart, not only are they are intelligent, but they're helping you figure out what you got to get better at in your life. So I appreciate you guys, Jenny and Amber, being on yet again. Anyway, we're going to wrap this thing up. Let's wrap final it up. thoughts and it just from your episode, final takeaway, any things you want to add before we give the sign off? Um, you just keep being aware of that that gender difference and what women have to, to go through to get to the same place you are. Like be a guy that's aware of that. That's so helpful for us. If you have kind of an idea of our female experience, dating you becomes easier, relating to you becomes easier. Just like give us some credit where credit is due. We're trying to do the same hustle, but we have different biology. That is that is difficult. And Ooh. then yeah, be positive. Hey, joy. Be positive. Jenny, Yeah, I over agree. to you. I agree with what Amber, <laughs> what Amber said. Um, and just really embracing who you all are overall, right? I understand that this is a money podcast, but mm -hmm. with where things are going, like money is not the basis of 
eternal happiness, of eternal joy, of eternal peace. Mm -hmm. You know, so use money as an avenue to create a life that you want for yourself. Work hard, create a plan. If it doesn't plan out, that's fine, but create something for yourself. But understand that it doesn't all come down to just money. Money is an, is, is, is an mm -hmm. asset. It's, it's a way that allows you to get things done and move and move how you maneuver. But it's not, you know. The end all be all. The end all be all. Well said, Jenny. Well said, Amber. What I will say is, speaking of gratitude, I get up every morning and I do uh, an affirmation. My, my Jewish mother made me do an affirmation every best. day when I was a kid. Did she really? Don't every mommies. day. And I still say it. I've changed it. Let's since, hear it. I'm not going to say it. But I do no. say I, I appreciate a, being alive, and I'm going to have a good attitude today. No matter what happens in my life, I'm going to have a good attitude, gratitude. And I always say, speaking of that, you know, money is just one of the things, I say I am thankful for health, wealth, and happiness. Without those three things, what you got? So anyway, those are the three things. Money isn't everything, but it is one of the things. Yes. Health, wealth, and happiness. Anyway, respect to you, Jenny. Respect to you, Amber. Thank you, guys. We'll be back next Thursday live. I'm not sure if you're going to be here, but Jenny will be here moving forward. I'll be living be limitless, here. baby. You know that for a fact. Living limitless with restrictions. <laughs> it's the value. It's attainment. All good. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of the Sauzcast. We'll see you live next Thursday. And remember to always save that moolah. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Hey.